Who said there wasn't green here? So all the people in California who are still celebrating St. Patrick's, you get to witness all this green so close up. And on the west coast of the Americas, north to south. And those of us who are on the 18th of March, we're a day late for seeing all this green so close up, but we rejoice in every little bit of life that there is. How do you like our rockery here in Magdala? There we finally got the sun. That was the reason for the delay. See here we have a different view of Magdala. There's the synagogue. And then the other synagogue is back across this road here. So I just have to go back there a few hundred yards more or less across from our synagogue. It's 163 min uh, meters apart. There's the town of Migdal, a nice little view of it, perched on the side of the hill. The hills bordering Lebanon, for which we pray very much that there will be peace and good sense and respect for human dignity. No matter what the differences are, we have to work it out in a beautiful way, in a good way. <clears throat> So here you have all these amazing flowers. It's a carpet of flowers everywhere. And you have these clovers as well. That's interesting actually, if we had them, had them for yesterday. You can see the, the three leaf clovers, but they're, um, they're actually not shamrocks. Shamrocks are, a, I guess, clover family, but they're a special breed. And some people don't know the difference, but that's okay. We can forgive those things. But here you see the, the three leaves and you can see the, the structure. In fact, all of nature has this type of structure. Sorry about this. The camera just wiggled there a little bit because I was stooping down too much. So we just have one carpet of flour all the way. Try and count them. Look at all these plants growing up along this rock here. This is limestone rock. And today's reading is in the garden. I'm sure that it's not like this kind of garden. This isn't really a garden. It's a rockery that's growing wild without husbandry. These are a bit weather beaten, but maybe there's a couple here that are a little bit more pristine in their beauty. Some of them are bust. The flowers last for a day or two and they're gone. Just want to go up here a little bit more. Got my sticks here. These sticks are wonderful with these root claws. They're great for gripping on rock. I'll just take one with me so I can keep the other hand in the camera. And these thistles, I can't wait for them to mature. You know, this beautiful purple on these thistles. And here you have these beautiful flowers. So many different types. It's just amazing. And if the snowflakes aren't different, maybe the flowers aren't different, are all different. If the snowflakes aren't the same, rather. There's another clover seed. There's obviously also some mix here of grasses that are brought in for feeding the cattle or the cattle come with them in their gut from the village of Wadi Hammam on the other side of this mountain here west of us. So gardens are very and green and life is very appreciated here in this desert region. And that's so unbelievable for a lot of people. Some people said to me yesterday evening at a St. Patrick's gathering, they couldn't believe the colors of yesterday's live stream, but it was a little bit more distant than here.
here we're in the middle of it the richness and variety and splendor of nature here on this rock so much life growing in the rock it's amazing so here we are and we've got probably one of the longest readings of the year as one commentator said this morning at his 4 a.m. delivered on my schedule message from Denver Colorado the Augustan Institute Tim Gray and he makes a wonderful uh, comparison of the two texts we have today of the Daniel reading and the reading of, about Susanna and the reading of the gospel also about a woman who was accused of sin and there are, there's a great difference between the two cases one has actual factual evidence and the other one is trumped up charges to cover their own rotten conscience and that's very serious, very grievous. And a lot of these kind of situations we have today in our world and the biblical message about the sacredness of the human being, the dignity of the human being, is trampled underfoot. Imagine if I walk on some of these flowers, they'll be trampled underfoot. Human dignity doesn't have a lot more defense in front of violent people. The taking of life and the abuse of people, the trafficking of people. It's amazing. And the Western world is paying for it. They're financing it, purchasing it, consuming it. And that's uh, also a big challenge for our world. How do we educate? How do we teach? because we're not into condemning. We want to read reality, but after Calvary, we're not condemning. We want, we're in the redeeming attitude, like parents for their child, the redeeming attitude. That's, sometimes we prefer to put ourselves on the seat of judgment, like both cases are doing, one of them completely with evil intent, the other one also with an evil intent. In fact, they don't even worry about the case itself. In the gospel story, they just want to put Jesus in a bind. Imagine using somebody's sin and bringing them to trial, not so much because they care about that, but because they want to bring somebody down, somebody else. It's incredible manipulation. And we're people that know and have learned about mercy and that it's possible for human beings to turn around. We know the people who are addicted turn around. We know that criminals turn around. We know that corrupt politicians can turn around. It might be more difficult, but it's possible. So then if we're redeeming people to have a redeeming attitude. How is your rockery? How is your garden? The garden of your soul where you go to your garden and rejoice and express gratitude for the gifts of creation of nature behind every gift every little flower there's a giver Psalm 23 is invoked today. Though I go through a dark valley, I fear no evil. Actually, last Sunday, a week ago, I climbed up along here in this valley and there were a bunch of teenagers up there. Uh, wonderful kids, young, ultra-Orthodox, wearing their tzitzit from B'nai Brack and we had a marvelous encounter. They wanted to come down here, which is uh, kind of 
uh, you could slip easily because there are steep points that you can't really see there well and then you could do a lot of damage to nature so it was took a little convincing to get them to go all around the back there and we came down on the other side it was quite interesting conversation to have encounters with others in the garden of our universe to learn about others to learn to respect others to discover others others being other big challenge in our world with all our education all our sophistication the guys the really the criminal guys in the first reading of daniel are um are um the elite of the they're the judges you know who gets to be appointed judge somebody that knows the law who has studies who has respect who has character who has balance serenity who is not moved by corruption and yet these people are as corrupt as you can get people we leave it like that for today let's pray for our world for the renewal of every heart and soul so we can all be a contribution for good and mutual understanding. God bless you here from Mount Arbel at the Sea of Galilee.